Hello, good day, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back. This is Viper AS, and this is continuing part two of Karazan. Levels, the introductory, introductory level 70 raid of the Burning Crusade. It's a 10 man raid. It's, again, this is pretty much like Baby's first, like, solo raid. I guess Molten Core is probably technically a bit easier, but compared to the mechanics of some of the AQ fights, which can still cause problems to this day, even at level 90, this place is pretty straightforward. You come in here, you kill the bosses. Oh, I did forget to mention in the last video, uh, Big Bad Wolf, if you get that event for Opera, can drop a pet, the Little Bad Wolf. So, if you're in here for pet collecting, it's well worth going up to that point, uh, though there's more later on. This place is actually really good for pets, though they're not all super common. Come on, die. Though I believe they're all required for... Which achievement was it? I think it's... Raiding with Leashes 2. Yes, Little Bad Wolf, Menagerie Con Custodian, Nether Space Abyssal, and Fiendish Imp, I believe, are all from here. So, if you're aiming for that achievement to get Tito, I believe it is, a little wolf with a bow tie, then coming through here every now and again, trying to get the pets, is a good way of doing it. Admittedly, you can just get someone to lend you the pet, learn it for a little while, and give it back, and you still get credit for it. But there's no fun in that, really. You gotta do it the, the true way. So it's worth noting that once you pass by this door, if you were to die in here, or if you were to want to leave and come back, you can start from this point. There is a back entrance to Karazhan, and once you've passed that door, you unlock it just by being there, and it's up on this bridge around here. So that was the front door down there, and the back door is all the way up this tower and in through here. So it's just a, it's basically a checkpoint. Like, you can always come back to here once you've made it here. It's worth noting that there is another optional boss here, but you have to do an attunement questline for it to be able to do it. I haven't finished a questline quest line, because I just haven't. Uh, but if you were to finish it, I'm on the step where I have to get something from heroic shattered halls and s heroic uh, sethic halls, which are not very difficult. I just haven't yet. But once you do that, if you've done all the quest lines, there's this tiny little jar here, and you'll be able to click it, and it'll summon down Nightbane, a dragon. Super, super easy fight. The only problem with it is occasionally, I think every 25% of his health, he'll fly up into the air and rain bones down on you and make adds. But the bones don't really do much damage anymore, and the adds are laughably pathetic. So any class should be able to do it. But it is optional. He drops some pretty interesting transmog gear. He's got a really fun offhand that looks like a dragon breathing fire. But otherwise, totally optional. You don't have to. He's not part of any... I don't think he's part of any achievements for in here. I think the only achievement that you get from in here is for killing the main final boss. So all the other ones are optional. You can skip a lot of these guys. Some of them are going to aggro anyway, so it may as well just kill them down. And up here... All the way up here. Let's just go into Unholy Presence. Go a little quicker. It's the only thing I don't like about Death Knights too much. They don't have a lot of going quicker to them. I guess this is a little. But now that I'm engineering, I should be able to get to Rocket Boots. That should help. So... This is another one where it's going to be different depending on how survivable you are and how much damage you have. If you don't think that you can take the boss down fairly quickly, tag the bigger ones of these and either pull them back into here if you're super, super cautious, or just tank them where they are. They will drain your mana, but they will also, when they die, give you mana back, mana per second. Also, if you're looking to farm motes of mana, these guys drop a ton of them. So up here we have the Curator. He will pull things within a certain radius around him, but since you're high enough level at 90 to not pull these guys, you can wait till he goes into that alcove back there, and then tag him in case you don't want to pull these guys. If I were to pull him, it wouldn't matter too much, but you never know. Not everyone... like I've only just recently got this item level, so... He will spawn sparks, which will do damage to you. You can kill them if you like. He does have an enrage phase, 
but no matter what your damage is at level 90, you are super unlikely to hit that enrage phase, so he just kind of dies. The sparks you can take down, he does drop the uh, tier 4 gloves, so if you're a class that's not a death knight and not a monk, uh, it might be worth trying to pick those up if you're looking for them. Tier 4, I think for certain classes, looks really good. Like Tier 4 Warlock, super awesome. Uh, the Menagerie, uh, the Curator, can drop this pet, the Menagerie Custodian, which is a tiny little Curator, who will occasionally say some of the Curator's lines. So if you know the lines, if you were back in here in the day, it's a fun little pet. But the drop rate doesn't seem, per doesn't seem high at all. I have only gotten this one. This is the only area that could cause minor problems to level 90 people. The Mana Feeders are immune to magic. You can only be hurt by melee damage. So, if you're someone coming in here with like a staff, if you're a caster, you can still probably kill them, but it's going to take you a bit longer than it would for, you know, a warrior, a death knight, hunter, somebody doing physical damage. Just something to note. The big guys don't really do much. It is also worth noting, you can see these little books dotted around the floor. Every once in a while you'll find one you can interact with and you can loot, and it'll give you a separate book. Oh, there we go. There's one. They don't tend to look any different, so you kind of just have to try them all. See? Immune to blood boil. Son of a... Forgot my own advice. Where was it? Right there. So you'll open that up, and you'll get another book. And there's four different books you can get. One for melee DPS, one for ranged DPS... Oh, sorry. One for melee DPS, one for magic DPS, one for healing, one for tanking. This one I seem to have gotten is the uh, the caster one. Uh, so whenever you do a harmful spell, it has a chance to do additional damage. You right-click that, and it gives you that buff for a while and a page, which you can read for lore or destroy. I just got the buff. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you can only have one buff at a time, so if you take the caster one, and then you pick up a healer one, and you're like, oh, I want that one instead. They don't really make a huge difference, but it's it's a cool little thing to know. Though it can be a pain searching for it. It was different back when like going through these rooms was something that like took some time. Now it doesn't. Now you just fly through. So you come up this staircase. We're going to cut through there. I'm going to skip these guys. I don't have to kill everything. You can if you want. Good for reputation. Okay for gold. They've kind of nerfed the amount of gold you can get through these places. But it's not terrible. Lots of stuff to sell. Like even just looting stuff, I think I've made 129 so far. Not shabby, and I'm not killing everything as you can tell. Actually, I think I may have done some of that beforehand. I forgot to reset it when I came in here. So spell shades, some of them go invisible, so sometimes that happens. Uh, they're really not difficult either. They're just kind of trash mobs. They're caster trash mobs, but whatever. This room up here, again, nothing very difficult, but if you tag any of them, it does tag all of them. So if I were to do that over here, these guys over there still get aggroed too. Really doesn't matter too much at 90, but it's still worth noting. Loot everything. The reason we're clearing these guys out is to make it easier to go through there. There's a hidden doorway, which, if you don't know it's there, isn't super obvious on the map. So a lot of people have been through here or have seen guides for it, so you click here, and you go to the hidden boss. This guy is also entirely optional, but he drops a pet, so it's well worth coming through here and getting this guy. Honestly, I don't remember what type of transmog gear a lot of these guys drop. You can check their drop tables, you can check atlas loots or whatever. I don't really remember. And even if I did, I would only really know plate ones. This guy will summon another little imp. There you go, kill wreck, who does minuscule damage. And if you leave him up long enough, he'll spawn more portals back here. Let's see if I can actually leave him alive long enough to do it. He'll open up portals here, which will spawn even smaller imps, which do even more insignificant damage. Super easy. Like, none of the adds are really a problem. You can kill him if you want. There you go, there's the pet. I'll get a fiendish imp from that. I've already got one, but it's still cool. And let's pop that guy out. Ah. If only I could type. Oh, I guess I didn't have him. I must have traded him away. He actually has a nice little summon animation, and sometimes he says stuff. So, otherwise, just a kind of... It's a little mini kill wreck. Which is kind of awesome. 
Uh, I am going to pull back out. And eh, no, nah, screw it, I'll leave him. So, that was uh, Ilhoof. Now we go up here to the Shade of Rand, which used to be a huge thing. This used to be, is your raid paying attention, yes or no, you pass or fail this fight. If everyone knew what to do, super easy fight. Like, it went smooth, everything was cool. If they didn't, everyone died. Nowadays, uh, not so much. It's not too bad. He dies pretty quick. But it's worth noting the things he does in case you come in here and you are lesser damage. So, he will teleport to the center usually. Nope, I guess not. He casts spells, he's got arcane missile, firebolt, uh, fireball. Then he'll go to the middle and do one of three things. If he sucks you in, he's going to do arcane explosion, so you run to the outside. Otherwise it does minuscule damage. But, and it knocks you back. Sometimes he'll do a flame wreath, which will put a ring of fire around a random uh, raid member. Since you're soloing it, it'll be you. Uh, and sometimes he'll do a blizzard. Uh, the fire thing... Uh, just gonna deal with these guys so I got a little more time to talk about it. The fire ring, if you step out of it when its cast time is, uh, before its cast time is done, it does massive damage to the raid, or massive back at the time, and knocks up everyone. Like that! I moved out of the flame wreath. Again, not a lot of damage now, but fall damage is still proportional to health. At 30% health, I think, he spawns those four adds, which do die with him, I believe. If not, they're kinda easy. Blizzard will move around the outside in a circle, and if you're in the center it won't harm you, and if you're on the outside it'll do damage and slow you. The Flame Wreath is really the only thing to watch out for, which clearly I didn't, but uh, the fall damage can hurt, but if you can mitigate fall damage, or if you just don't care, it's not too bad. I think I'm actually going to call this video here. No, no, no. I'm going to do the next boss. Yeah. Uh, the next boss is another optional boss, but there's another reason you might want to do him. So, I'm going to do him as well. The next boss can be sometimes mildly frustrating for certain classes. He took a little longer to kill on the Warlock, but he still died, so... Eh. I guess part two of this video is going to be the long one, but... It would be... There haven't been any natural stopping points, whereas after this boss is a very natural stopping point. In fact, after this boss is the thing that would stop a lot of people from being able to make it to the last boss. Hopefully that won't apply to me, but we'll see. This guy, Nether, Nether Spite, is in probably the coolest run room of this instance. I like the way this place looks. Got the, the like, starry ceiling and everything. The telescope looks cool. When you pull this guy, eventually, I'm going to see if I can let it last for a little while, he'll open up three portals. One, two, three. There should be one over there. I don't know where it is. Each one will shoot a beam into this guy, giving him a buff. You can stand in those beams and get a buff from it and prevent him. The red one does damage, I believe. Let's see. Red one, yep, damage taken, reduced, damage, uh, defense is increased, health increased. The green one is healing, so if you're doing the solo and you're unsure about how well you're going to be able to do it, stand in at least the green one so he doesn't get healed. And the blue one ups his damage. So if you can find a way to stand in all three, it is possible. It's not totally undoable, but whatever. But at least stand in probably green and red are your best ones. No matter what class you are, you'll be getting healed and he won't be, and your defense will go up. Keep in mind, once you get out of a beam, uh they will give you a debuff. And also, while you're in the beam, the stacking buff also does damage to you, so it can be bad to stand in there for too long. Oh, plate shoulders don't look that great at all. But this is the reason people want to solo him. He guarantees two or three Netherwing eggs. So if you're doing the Netherwing rep, which I'm not, I'm actually done with it, and they also don't sell to a vendor, so I'm going to toss it, this is a great place to, once a week, get three free eggs, just free reputation. So... Real quick, I'm going to get us to the vendor, because we'll, by now, if you're anything like me, your bags are starting to fill up with stuff, and you're going to want to unload a lot of it. So, can you you can go around if you want. I just jump down because it's not fatal. If you have slow fall, which I actually do, I've got the freaking slow fall cape, but I'm so new to engineering, 
I keep forgetting that. So if you have slow fall or some way to mitigate fall damage, it's even easier. But you can come over here to the guy who hurts people's eyes because he flashes too quickly to different colors. And he's another just vendor. So, good idea to sell and repair and all that fun stuff. I'm going to finish doing this, but this will be the end of episode 2 of Solo and Karazin. Tune in next time for everyone's favorite, the chess event! Yay! It's probably going to get its own episode, because it's one of those things that people are going to look for and not want to have to wade through other videos. So, chess event coming up.